Hey everyone, welcome to Birds of a Feather. Today we're taking part in a Dixie Bell Magazine Holder Challenge. I'll provide links to the other participants' projects in the description below, so be sure to check them out. Whenever you're figuring out a design for any sort of painted piece, um, I suggest making yourself a paper template. Just draw it out, trace it around with pencil, and then you've got a template that you can play around with. If you have any gouges on the piece you're working on, what I usually like to do is tape off around the sides of it so I don't get more um, like wood filler or mud on the wood that I necessarily have to. And then I'm just going to take the wood filler and just scrape it on where I need it. And you can just take off the excess is that if you are using Dixie Bell mud, take a wet rag and wipe the rest off. Never pour it down a drain because it just um, solidifies and it can clog it. So just something to be aware of when you're working with the Dixie Bell mud. Before your mud or wood filler dries, just be sure to peel the tape off and then you just have this little bit to sand back once it's dry. If you're working with wood that tends to bleed, you're definitely going to want to prime with a stain blocker such as Boss. But as I can see here where the wood is scuffed, this is a white wood and I think this has been sort of speckled to look like a different wood. And of course it's got a darker stain on it. But this is the telltale. And when I rub this with water, I don't get any red on it. So I don't believe it's going to bleed and I don't think I have to use a stain blocker on this. Even though I don't feel we needed a um, stain blocking primer for this particular piece, we went ahead and we primed it with a white color boss. And that's because I'm painting with some light colors here and um, this will just save me having to put several coats of light chalk paint on the piece. So let's just set this aside. I'm going to start actually by painting these spindles here. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to tape off around here. And I've got a little trick for that. So I've got a piece of painter's tape and I've just used the backing from one of my transfers. I'm just going to put that onto a paint stick. And what I have here is a punch. I'm just going to take it and just punch it through so that I'm cutting that piece of tape. Okay, so I'm going to grab a pair of scissors. So now I'm just going to cut a slit. And I'm going to wrap it around the spindle. Press it right down. And there. Now if you don't have a big enough punch you can always just take one of these um, circle stencils, just draw your size, cut it out with a pair of these scissors. These are just curved scissors here and do the same thing. And it just saves you from cutting out piece by piece by piece and going all the way around which is a bit time consuming. And if you do happen to have a gap I wasn't too precise on these ones here. You can just bridge it with a piece of tape. So there, tip of the day, that's a time saver for you. So I've taped off around these dowels or spindles and I've got some um, a resist paper just in case I get paint drips because that is going to be a lighter color inside. And what I'm using is this color by Dixie Belle called Midnight Sky. So that's the color I'm going to be using on the spindles. And I'm going to use this flat artist brush to brush it on because it's really tight quarters, especially down here. I can't really get a thicker brush in there. So, as usual, I'm going to mist my brush so it's just slightly damp. And dipping into the paint. And I'm just going to have to paint around, manage it best I can. I'll probably need two coats because I did put a white primer on here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it from underneath on both sides here. And then I'm just going to have to do my best to get all the way around. Let's see if I can stand this up. I'm going to mist my paintbrush as I go. I'm just going to have to keep turning it around and getting it from all the angles. So I know you guys aren't going to be able to see this. You just have to do your best to get right around. Okay, so I'm going to tilt it back and forth just to make sure I've got good coverage there. I see one spot here. Right underneath here. And that's good for the first coat. So I'll be finishing the rest of these off camera and then we'll be back for next steps. Um, I think what I'm gonna do from here is wrap the spindles up once they're dry. And then I'll paint the inside and then move to the outside. After removing the tape, you can see I have nice clean edges at the end of these dowels. I'm creating a makeshift painter um, to get into tight spaces with a piece of scrap felt. I've got some masking tape on it and double face tape. I've got masking tape on here and I'm going to stick these two together so that it's removable. Then I'm going to give it a test and see whether it works. I'm thinking it could be a little difficult to get in here with a paintbrush only because I don't have much clearance between the bottom of the uh, magazine rack and the dowel. So I've made this makeshift tool. It's just a piece of felt taped onto, um, this is just a scraper. And I'm going to see if I can get in here with that just to paint the edges. So I don't know, let's test this out. I'm going to spray this as I usually would mist any brush. For this, I'm using Haint Blue, and I don't have a lot of this left. Just give it a shake. I'm just going to dip right in, get a little bit on the pad, and let's just give this a test. Seems to be okay. So let's see what happens when I take it to here. seems to be getting in pretty well. I can just angle right into the corner here. So let's just get a little bit more. Just got a little bit more there. I can just push it right into where I need it to be because there's no direction on felt. So you can push and pull. A little bit more. Let's just see if I can get into this area here. I'm just going to give this a bit of a mist. And just try to smooth it out a little bit. It's looking pretty good. So, let's see. I might just have an okay time at getting the paintbrush in the rest of this, or I might just continue with this. Let's just turn this around. I think I'll be okay to get uh, the paintbrush in there, but since I've got it on its side, let's just give this another mist. I'm just going to do the edges. I think this is pretty good for edging. Okay, and now I'm going to do the other side and get the edges in the same manner. Just have to be sure that I duck under these dowels here as I'm doing this.
Okay, I can see I've got some a little bit of blue paint here. I really should have masked that off like I did that first rung there. I can probably get that off with some water. Okay, I'm going to proceed with washing that off. So I'm going to take a break and uh, we'll be back to do the sides. Okay, I'm back in business again. I've got everything taped off. So, um, this time I'm going to try the mini angle brush. I missed in my paintbrush and I'm just going to go in. Okay, we're just going to go like this. from a different angle here. Okay, perfect. I'm going to leave it at that make sure I don't have any drips. As the blue is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and brush the side. And for this, I'm using a color called Fluff by Dixie Belle. My brush is already a little bit damp because it's been drying off, I just washed it. So I'm just gonna dip in. Now you're not gonna be able to see this since my base is already sprayed white. I never start right at the edge. I always start a little way down and then I brush back to the edge so that I don't have an accumulation of paint there. And I'm gonna finish with light long strokes. So off camera, I added some peacock blue. It's a really beautiful bright color and I distressed it back to uh, some of the the white underneath and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna distress around the edges just to bring back some of the dark stain I love the look of brown coloring with blues I think it's a really nice color combo so I'm not gonna do it too heavily just a really light touch just so that it peeks through and gives a little bit of definition. So once that's done, the last step is going to be to add stripes onto the side. And what I've done here is I've made myself a template. I find the easiest way to plan stripes on a small piece like this is to make a template, as I showed you before. And basically, I penciled it out on the paper. Then I took a notcher and I notched where my stripes are. You can also do this with a pair of scissors, just cut a little v-notch there. And that's so you can take a chalk pencil like this and just make a little tick mark where your lines intersect. I'm going to do this on the top and the bottom. Then I'm going to take the paper off. Now just so that you're clear on what colors you're painting your stripes, I put these little dots on. So I've got my blue, yellow, red, and green, so I can refer back to it. Another tip is basically just to take your paints and you're just going to line them up in a row in the order that you want to paint in. So if you don't have these dots, no problem, just line it up and then you'll be all set and prepped to go. I've now started taping and I just want to show you the process. So I took my tape and I cut it right down the middle. I have a piece of plastic here and this is just a binder insert. I like it because it's textured so I can easily peel my tape off. Now what you want to do is you want to make note of the straight edge because you've got a wobbly cut edge on one side. So I'm going to turn it around so that my straight edge is facing my ruler and I've just clamped the ruler along my tape line so that I can get a precise straight line. If you just tape from A to Z, 
painter's tape has stretch in it and you could get a bit of wobble depending on the distance you're going. So as added insurance, I like to tape against a straight edge here. So I'm gonna start at the top, but right up against that ruler. And then I'm just gonna make sure I'm right up against the edge and press down as I go. Now don't be too concerned that you've got overlap here because that's where I'm not painting. Just burnish the edge really well. Make sure you're straight. If you find that you're not, you can always just lift and reposition. I think that's better. Now I'm gonna remove my clamps. And I'll be ready to tape the next side. So again, I'm gonna position against my tick marks, line it up, clamp it, and tape my edge. Oh, I do wanna mention though that since you're taping on the outside edge, you wanna make sure you're on the inside of your lines. So my next one is gonna be right there. I'm gonna clamp at the top, make sure I'm on my tick marks, and also clamp at the bottom here. Okay, now I'm ready to go with my other piece. I've got my other piece here. Just tear it off the roll. Again, make note of where your straight edge is. So I'm gonna start at the top. Make sure you've got enough length, top and bottom, so you don't run short. Just press down at the top here. And then run right along that ruler edge. And it really takes the guesswork out of ensuring that you're absolutely straight. I'll remove my clamps. And I'm ready to move on to the next mark. Again, I'm gonna line up on the marks. And you want to be, you want the ruler to be on the inside of where you're going to be painting. That's the way I remember it, because it can get a little confusing with which side of the line you're taping on. Now I'm going to cut my next piece. Again, I'm cutting right through the middle for the length that I need. The quick way to cut your painter's tape in half is to put it onto um, a cutting mat here. You can either use a rotary cutter like this, or you can simply take any kind of craft knife and just cut right down the middle. And then I can simply peel up my tape. So I'm gonna leave that on the board for now. The other way, of course, is to just cut it with scissors right off the roll. And as I showed you before, just to put it on a piece of textured plastic so it's easy to lift. When you're all done taping, I'm just gonna brush away my chalk marks so that I don't see them. They easily brush away. Then I'm gonna line up my chalk paint so that I've got the colors in the order that I want them. So starting with my Bunker Hill Blue, my Colonel Mustard, Barn Red, and Evergreen. I've got them all lined up. I'm gonna go one by one and paint my colors in between where I've taped. And before I do that, I'm gonna be sure to burnish along the edge so it's taped down extremely well. The brush I'm gonna be using is this French Tip Brush by Dixie Belle. And the reason I'm using it is because I wanna offload most of my paint in the middle and then move to the sides to brush inwards. So I think what I'm gonna do is just tape off this edge here so I don't accidentally get paint on there. And then we're gonna be ready to go with our first color. I'm gonna start on the right side with the evergreen. I'm gonna flip it around, paint my evergreen on the other side, wash my brush out, 
and then I'm going to move on to the next color. So now I'm all taped up and ready to go. I've got tape along the top edge here and both sides. I'm just going to give my evergreen a bit of a shake. I'm going to dip in. And I don't want too much paint. I'm going to offload in the middle. And then I'm going to move out to my edges and work my way in from the edges. And that's because in case I haven't burnished well, I don't want bleed underneath that edge. Okay, so once you have the paint on, just come back with some longer strokes just to neaten that up. Now I can still see white through this green paint, so I'll likely do two coats of that. And just to be consistent, I'll probably do two coats of each color because I do believe that the white's going to show through. So now I've turned my piece around and once again, I'm dipping into my evergreen. I don't want too much paint. I'm going to offload it in the center. And I'm going to come back and brush towards the top and come in from the sides. And I'll just brush down to the bottom here. Okay, then once again, longer brush strokes, just to clean that up. Now I forgot to mention that you want to mist your brush before you start, and that makes the paint go on much smoother. So, my green is done, I can set that aside. My next color is going to be Barn Red, which I'm going to paint right here. I'm going to wash out my brush and then I'll be back to paint the next color. A great big thank you goes out to Jennifer at Enriched by Jennifer. She's my local Dixie Belle paint retailer and without her this project would not have been possible because I'm participating in a Dixie Belle challenge. A bunch of um, Dixie Belle designers have gotten together to show you how they're interpreting their own magazine holders. And lo and behold, my shipment is stuck literally 20 minutes away from my house. It's been there for the last two days. I have no idea when it's gonna be coming. So Jennifer really saved my bacon on this one and I just can't thank her enough. I guess while other people are out borrowing cups of sugar from their neighbors, I'm out borrowing paint. Not only did Jennifer hook me up with the colors I needed, but when she didn't have them in stock, she actually dipped into her own stash to provide the other two colors. Last color going on and it's Bunker Hill Blue. It's a gorgeous deep blue, almost indigo. Look how gorgeous that is. Don't worry if it looks streaky, you're going to rectify that on the second coat. Dipping in once again. 
Once I've done this side, I'm going to let it dry for about half an hour and then I'm going to come back and do my second coat and we're going to be totally done. Well, except for a clear coat if you wish to put one on. Now, you don't necessarily have to put a clear coat because Dixie Belle chalk paint is durable. It cures in 30 days. Okay, I went heavier with the paint on this side, so it's not going to be as streaky, but it definitely still needs another coat. Long strokes just to smooth that out. And I'm calling that done. I'm going to wash out the brush, put my lid back on, and we'll be back in 30 minutes for the second coat. I'm usually very light-handed with paint, so it actually took three coats to get good coverage. You might be a little heavier than I am, and you may find that you only need two, but I find with these primary colors, it often does take a little bit more paint just to get good coverage over white. So I'm gonna peel back, and I always do it at a 45 degree angle to prevent tear out. Starting to look lovely. Last piece. I hope you enjoyed our Point Blanket Inspired Magazine holder. If you're interested in trying out some of these products, I'll leave links below in the description. For more paint ideas, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that bell to get notifications of our upcoming projects.